Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, aka Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self. Looking to take myself up off the shelf to discover my greatest internal wealth to provide happiness to my external physical self. Hopefully, you're doing the same for yourself, but y'all know what it is. It's Sunday and it is speak grunt. We come through, we speak to you, and we hope you drop down in the chat, leave a comment, and you speak too. Drop down in the chat where you coming in from at. Coming in from at. That's what happens when you're talking too fast. Drop down in the chat where you at. Let us know. Check in on your roll call. Anyhow, it's Speak Grunt, y'all. Well, this is by Grunts for Grunts. 11B, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha 2. You know what we do. 0311, my Marine Corps crew. Shout out to you. Not for kids, but the kids will be blessed by this too. Because some of the times the language that we may use may not be so beneficial to their ears, but it's grunt speak. So I'm sure you're going to hear something that'll uplift you, something that'll motivate you, and something that'll hopefully help you get through to finding the best version of you. Because remember what I said, looking to discover my greatest internal wealth to provide strength for my external self, because it's the internal that means the most to you. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about a few things today. We might be about a half an hour. Or we might be an hour. Who knows? You know how we go. It's just going to be me and you. Whiskey Charlie won't be here tonight. Neither will Killer Wolf. They both have things that they was previously engaged to do. So it's just me and you. And I'm going to need you to get down here and talk to me too. But if you can't, that's cool. I'm going to make sure I give you the information that I have for you. So give me just a minute here to make sure but my setup and everything is clear then get my sunglasses and we gonna get into that and i want you to talk about what's been going on in your life how you've been feeling tell me about that boop, boop. all right now i really feel like i'm in big sarge mode i don't know if uh the sunglasses it's just been something that i started a long time ago and it seems like it don't feel right if i don't have them on when i do the show but every now and again i have to drop them down to see what i need to read in order to let them go some of y'all might be watching that sunday night football flow i believe is san francisco and the broncos I fell asleep on mr tom brady today a little bit tired a little bit jet lagged that way had a little long weekend and maybe that's some uh talk about too but Today, I want to know what do you believe? What happens when you believe? What do you believe for you? What happens when you believe? What happens when you believe? What happens when we believe? What are some of the outcomes in believing in your capabilities? What are some of the things that can happen when you don't believe? But what happens when you believe? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what happens specifically for you when you believe that you can grow. What happens specifically for you when you believe that you're incapable of letting something go? Maybe it's something that affected you mentally. Maybe something happened to you physically and it's difficult for you to let go of that vision of what happened to you in order to help you get through. Ooh, Winky Johnson, physically how much he believed, something that happened to him too. Mentally, what do you have to be in order to get through, to begin to believe in you again? So that's what I want to talk about with you tonight. What happens when you believe? Talk about some things that I've seen earlier today and maybe throughout this week and in recent years too. What happens when people believe in the action steps that they take to help them get through? So that's what I'm talking about to you grunts by grunts for grunts everybody is welcome but everybody cannot and will not be a member remember so where do i begin <clears throat> where do i begin i have a lot to unpack from this past weekend well not physically because i just was finishing up that but mentally spiritually i have a lot to unpack from this weekend some things that i believe that i would be able to do those things came true and let me just tell you it was a blessing for me 
I hope your weekend was a blessing for you. It was a blessing for me. It was a blessing for my wife. And it'll be a blessing to my family as I continue to unpack these things and take them in the next direction for me and my life and my business and the things that I plan on doing. Now, last week when we came back after our three weeks break, I know I got right into the top of things and we was just discussing, but I never asked you about that one thing. Yeah, that one minute war, that one minute win. Drop down in the chat, begin. What are you warring with? What are you winning that? <clears throat> and what do you believe about how you dealing with that? And I'll start off myself because I see I'm the only one on here. So that's cool. I'm going to go. Uh-oh. Hold on. Got to turn my phone down. Okay. Got to excuse me. I'm still jet lagging. I just woke up from a little nap. You can see the bags under my eyes. See, one minute win, one minute war. I don't really have anything that I'm warring with. I don't have anything that I'm really struggling with, that I'm battling with. If I had to give you anything, it would be to make sure I continue to believe and then acting on these things. The only thing, only reason that would be a war for me, because sometimes when you go away, when you go on a vacay or when you read something or you, you, you write a plan or you start to set something in a new space, what happens is when you go away from that vacation space or that free in your mind space or you go away from what you wrote down for that day, then real life and reality seems to get in the way. You go back home and you go back to your job, you go back to work and what the things that you used to do and then you begin to war with. Are you going to do those things that you said you should do? Are you going to continue to live like you thought you should after you came off of vacation too? So if I had to be warring with anything, it's just to be to make sure I continue to execute. To continue to execute on the things that I said I was going to do, to be consistent and disciplined and doing those things too. But to be honest, I don't have anything I'm warring with. That would just be one thing. Now, what I'm winning that is knowing that I'm going to execute and knowing that I have a put, I'm putting a plan in place, knowing I'm making adjustments every day, knowing I'm taking the information that I learned from the 120 conference space, Dr. Eric Thomas 120. And if you don't have his book, you owe you, you need to go order that too. But I'm winning that I have a clear view. I have a different view. I have a better view of myself too. It doesn't matter what you see in me. It doesn't matter what anybody else see in me. It's about how I view me. And it's the same thing for you. So you should be winning with the fact that you see you and that you able to get through because you believe in everything that comes to you and what you can do. That's my one minute win. That's my one minute war for you because I don't have nothing that I'm warring through. And that's a bonus too. Because, you know, the negative part of our mind and the enemy, he attacks us all the time. But when you find out that you're not warring anymore with certain things, maybe you just overcame that thing. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So what happens when you believe? Earlier today when um my wife and I first got home from our trip, let me tell you about, so this past Thursday, I flew out to Chicago to go to Dr. Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip hop preacher. Most of y'all know if you follow me on the show, I'm a certified extreme execution execution coach. Inspirational speaking is what I do. That's why I'm always on here talking to you and looking to inspire you. And hopefully the things that I'm using is helping you get through because it definitely helps me too. Um, my wife and I were in Chicago from Thursday to today, and it was an amazing time. It was a lot of things to free and relax my mind and uh, a lot of ideas that I had that I share with other people that they seem to like and enjoy. So I was praying on Wednesday 
after I got done taking care of some things at the house that day and talking to God about some things I wanted him to say and some things that I wanted to hear clearly and specifically, and I knew he would have it for me. And the, the recurring thing that I continue to get out of the conference was to believe. To believe. I'm on here on Sundays. I'm on my Mr. Peen page most of every other day. And I have to be honest with you. I, sometimes I have to check myself and ask myself, do I believe what I say? Am I acting on it in the right way to, to bring to fruition, to bring to my reality the things that I say I believe that I want to do? It's like what I'm asking you. We grunts. We speak on that. It's things that we went through. But oftentimes we don't believe that it's healthy or manly to talking about the emotional side of, of we or the shortcomings that we sometimes see in ourselves. And being at the conference this weekend reminded me, God was reminding me, I need you to believe. And I need you to believe too, because being true blue of you infantry, then you know that was one of the things that we always had to do. We had to believe that we could come every overcome every obstacle and every battle. We had to believe that we could come overcome every obstacle and every battle. What do you believe? When I got home, as I was saying earlier, I figured, hey, I'm going to relax a little bit. I got another day off and then I can kind of finalize some things and I can kick, kick it in the gear. And the uh, Chicago Bears... Chicago Bears game was on. I think they played the Texans. Yeah. Chicago Bears game was on. And I caught the last bit of that. And that was so pretty. That was pretty cool because my hotel was right across the street from when the stadium was at. I could see there the, the stadium from my hotel room window. And last night when I came back from having a at the Navy Pier with my wife, which is pretty cool this time of year. I came back from the Navy Pier and we was on the elevator, the elevator that we, I mean the elevator, we was on the elevator of the hotel that we stayed in, the Chicago Bears were staying there too. That's the hotel that they come to when they have their game. So it was the whole crew. And as I seen the door open up on, I think it was floor 23, there was a security guard right there checking off everything. And then one of the coaches got on. I don't know who he was to be exact. I just know he had a playbook and some Chicago paperwork stack. And he was geared up from head to toe in the Chicago gear. So you know how I go. Hey, coach, who y'all playing tomorrow? He said the Texans. And that was pretty cool because I think Chicago was like 0-2 or 1-1. Their record wasn't sweet. But the fans still showed up because they believed they could see something good today. And guess what? They were able to. They pulled out the victory in the end because they believed that they were capable. I believe when I seen the game, it was 20 to 20 with not a lot of time remaining. And I'm not even for sure if they went into overtime because I was falling asleep from time to time. But what I do know and what I was able to see that they believed because they got the victory. Just like I'm sure the Texans believed too but they wasn't able to make it through. It's people around you who believe in something in their life too, but maybe just maybe they wasn't, I won't say they wasn't capable. Maybe just maybe they didn't take the steps to make sure that what they believe they actually received. Chicago Bears took the step today. And I wanna say Justin Fields had two interceptions anyway. But he still continued to take the steps to get on the field and believe that he could drive his team down and get the victory. To drive his team down and get the victory. What do you believe when you see the score stacked up against you? What do you believe when you see the bills keep rolling through? What do you believe when you see the PTSD affecting you? What do you believe when you see the drink and the weed that be calling you? Do you believe you have the opportunity to get through? What do you believe when your wife or your kids are poking and pulling at you? Because they need you to help them get through. Do you believe that is that you're capable of putting your, your, your life back on track? 
taking advantage of exactly where you at, taking control of your mind and controlling your thoughts and saying, this is my mind. I control my thoughts because I believe that the life that's for me, it's up to me to execute and bring that thing to my reality. Chicago Bears believe. They believe that they was going to get the victory. They believe they was going to get a fan some exciting to see. They believe, and I can just guarantee, down there in Chicago where we were staying at, they probably turned up, and that's where the party is at. Because the whole team was in the hotel. And I believe that security guard, he probably, huh, he probably having a day, because you know how it go when you get the victory. Everybody won party. I had that quick snap to my right, to y'all left, because I heard somebody moving around. I thought I was in here all by myself. Y'all know who it is. It's my wife. Mm -hmm. It's my lovely wife. But besides that, as I was in and out of sleep, I seen something else interesting. Indiana, the Colts, BKC. Indianapolis Colts beat KC, and they came back in the end, too, as Kansas City was driving. Dropped back pass, tipped off the fingers, interception. It's all over. Indiana beat KC. And then another thing that was interesting, the, the Miami Dolphins are 3-0. and Beat Buffalo. Who would have knew? But I bet you the team did. I bet you everybody around them, all 52 of the guys on that team, they had to believe in order to achieve the victory. That's all we're talking about. What do you believe and think about some things in your history? Don't live there. Flashback to a point in time where you used to be at, you're not currently at. Or flashback to where you're at right now, you believe one day that you could be here anyway. Miami Dolphins are three and zero. People thought Tyreek Hill was crazy when he when he wanted to go when he left Kansas City. I don't keep up with football like I used to, but being a speaker, I have to stay tapped into some information so I can share some with you, so I can make it relatable to you. Do you believe that you're capable? of doing those things that you visualize for you. Being in that infantry, being true blue, you really wouldn't survive if you didn't believe that you could overcome anything. From the smallest guys to the biggest guys, nobody really had too much. Well, some people had a little bit of fear in their eyes, but most of the individuals they didn't have no fear in their eyes when it came time to fight because we trained daily to believe that we could overcome anything. And it's in that training that you strengthen your muscle of believing. A little bit of Bava, Baya energy drink. It was one of those healthy things. My wife be looking out for me. So we talked about Chicago. We talked about Indy and KC, the Miami Dolphins being 3-0. and I really wanted to get to this Eric Thomas flow because I told you I was there over the weekend, and we're talking about a man believing. Or you can think about stories such as Marcus Luttrell, Lone Survivor, we know that well. Black Hawk Down, we know that well. American Sniper, we know that well because the movies had a story to tell. And most of the time in those stories for the main character, what was told, they believed and they never let go of focusing on the victory. No matter the things that they had to face or the things that encountered, focusing on the victory, focusing on finishing. Dr. Eric Thomas or E.T. the hip hop preacher as he's commonly known he talked about most of the time, well, he talked about when he left his home, being homeless at 16, how he had to get by himself to start to believe. As I'm finishing up his book, You Owe You, I'm in a chapter where he talked about being in those abandoned buildings and not being around his crew. And that was good, even though it was uncomfortable. 
because sometimes what you believe about you, other people don't believe that thing too. And then they're attempting to distract you. They're attempting to discourage you. They're attempting to tell you what you cannot do. And that's why my question to you is, what do you believe? He believed that he could do everything that he's been able to do. Change the lives of generations of millions of individuals who look like me and you. Who look like me and you. Talked about having a New York Times bestseller. He put a whole crew together to help him make that uh, attainable because he knew he was capable. And guess what he was able to do? New York Times bestseller. Number one on the list. And I think LA Times bestseller, he was number two on the list. What do you believe? What do you believe? Y'all heard me talk. I was separated from my family. I believe that I could be back with my family. I didn't know at one point in time what I wanted to do. I believe that I could be speaking to you. But here's what I also knew. And believe in that, I had to take action steps too. And being in the infantry and believing that we can overcome the enemy, we had to take action steps too. But what did we do? We trained until that belief muscle got so strong that it was second nature to you. You would run through a wall if your team leader told you to. But you can only do that by strengthening the belief muscle in you. You got to set some small goals that, that helps you get to, to medium goals, to get the large goals, to get to those extra large goals that you, you or nobody else know whether it's capable or whether it's possible. But nothing is impossible to those who believe. That's spiritual. Look that thing up, G. Herrick Thomas believed that if he invited less people and he raised the price to his conference, he would get the right people who wanted to live and change their life right. And isn't it amazing that it, that that is what he's been able to do? Sometimes we think in order to believe we need people surrounding me and you. We need other people to believe in what we do. No, you have to believe in you before anybody else can get on the bandwagon to support you because they want to see that you have discipline and consistency in what you say you believe. When we have kids, we believe they're going to be great. We believe that we're going to be happy when we walk them off to school one day. We believe that we're going to be able to put a smile on their face by taking care of them in the right way. We believe that everything is going to go well for them, even if it don't when we had a rough days. We don't bring that negative stuff our kids' way. We kind of save that till they get a little bit older. And I'm just being honest because somewhere in our mind, we change the relationship that we share with them because we've been indoctrinated into a system that don't make you believe in me and you and what you are able to do. You have to get part of that just believing you can get a good job, believing you're supposed to work for 30 or 40 years, but never really believing that you're capable of doing anything that you want to do. Eric Thomas believed I could have a number one best-selling book, and that's what he was able to do. What do you believe? How does what you believe change the outcome of your life and the others around you? I'm going to ask you that question again. How does what you believe change the outcome of your life and the others around you? When I went to Iraq for the first time in 06, I never thought this is it. Well, I had times when I thought this could be it. This could be the end of me. But I believed that I was able to lead my team and bring us back home safely for my part that I played, for the things that I was able to do. I wasn't a company commander. I just had the responsibility of two. 
he had 152. But I believe that I was capable enough and people believed in me that I could do my job rather uh, not easily, but easy enough for me. I believe when I spoke to their parents and said, I'm going to bring your kids back home. I believe that I was right and I wasn't wrong. It didn't hit me until later till when we start losing individuals, was I able to do what I said I was going to do? But here's the thing. I didn't have to keep believing in me. I had to believe in the God that I was praying to. It's something bigger than me and you. And what that was able to do, what that was able, how I was able to affect others around me, because when I came off of my energy to believe and to be executing, then they was able to believe too. And that all starts by having a positive attitude. That all starts by understanding that I'm in control of my attitude no matter what I'm going through. I done been shot, uh, shot at, not shot. I done been shot at. I done been flipped over in trucks, blown up a time or two. But I still believe that God was protecting me and I was going to be able to get through People believed, my wife believed that she prayed for me, that I was going to be able to make it through the struggles that I dealt with with my PTSD in the very beginning. Man, let me tell you something. I was in Chicago and my wife was back at the hotel room sleep and I needed to get a ride back to the room. And so I asked my buddy Chris, could I ride with him too, right? And his wife came and picked us up later on that night and drove us back to the hotel. And I was sitting in the back seat, sweet. I was chilling. I wasn't even tripping. That was something that I didn't believe was possible 10 years ago. I didn't believe that was possible because after being blown up and being flipped over in trucks, I needed to be in control. And that was something I, went, I did not want to let go of. I did not want to let go of being in control, especially when it was in the vehicle, because, again, that part of my life had had some traumatic things happen. And I feel like the only way that I was going to be all right if I was in control. But fast forward 10 years later, I realized it was a point in time in my life, 2017, to probably be exact around that time, where I was able to let go of that old belief that only person that could drive me was me. And I was able to see that the same God that was protecting me in Iraq was protecting me when somebody else was behind the wheel too. <laughs> Look at that. Attitude, what you believe about you. How does that affect the other people around you? By me believing that I was coming home, by me believing that I was going to bring my team home, by le me believing we could execute and do anything that people around me begin to believe too. And I tell you, my, my platoon too, second platoon, fortunately, we didn't lose anybody, but we lost other brothers too from other platoons. I'm not saying that they didn't believe. I'm not saying that at all. No disrespect to anybody. I'm saying that we believed in a way that would probably get us in trouble some days. We believed that in our squad specifically, if we drove fast, we would miss a bunch of things. And we did some of that, too. I didn't got a little slap on the wrist, but I believe that that was the way to overcome some of those rough days in Iraq. That was the way to overcome, to get our mind back on track when you had something catastrophic happen to you. And that positive belief and that positive attitude, it affects the others around you. When you bring in a negative attitude and a negative uh, uh, position of disbelief, then you're making it uncomfortable for the people that you, you usually see, that you normally see. Think about it. If you're around a person that's negative all the time, then it starts to take an effect on your mind. I remember seeing people who didn't smoke, like, no, nah, I don't smoke. But being in the army long enough, they believed that was a thing to do to pass the time by. So they started smoking, too. I missed that part. That part didn't. That wasn't a part of me because I always believed that smoking wasn't for me. Not until I got about 38, 39, and it wasn't cigarette time. I was smoking cigarette weed. But that was to help me with my PTSD. 
at that time in my life, I believed it was all right. I was done with the military. I was old enough and mature enough. And I had did my research enough to know that how it would affect me. Isn't it funny how our believing can change what we see? Our, our believing and our capabilities can change what we see. If you believe you're incapable, then in that moment, you're incapable. If Eric Thomas would have believed he was just a high school dropout and there was nothing else he could do, I wouldn't be sharing this type of information with you, possibly. Because God gave it to me, Ethan, I just need you to believe. Believe in what? Believe in what you see, not physically not currently, but what you visualize for you, G. Believe in what you see, that it could become your reality. Two years ago, on a ruck, I had an idea to start grunt talk, talking to grunts about the things that we went through and how to overcome and how to help you. And that's what we've been able to do. I have people that get in the chat and say how it helped them too. I believe that this was something that God wanted me to do. What if I wouldn't have took action though? I wouldn't be talking to you. What if you wouldn't have took action? You wouldn't be where you at today. Take action on those things that's holding you back and decide to remove them from your space. Because it's gonna affect the others around you based on what you do. The more you believe, the more they believe in you. And if you believe, especially to my men out there, because this message is definitely for you, the more you believe in what you're capable of, your family will be blessed by it and they will benefit from it too. And then they can learn to trust you, just like you had to learn to trust your squad and your team leader and your squad leader and your platoon sergeant too. You trusted them based on what he was able to do. You know how it go when you true blue. If you had a bad leader, you weren't following him. You respect his rank, but you weren't following his movement as much as you could without getting in trouble. But those ones that you believe in, again, I talked about Captain Wog, I believe, last week. I remember mentioning starting first class Flores and a number of other individuals starting Kibby. We believed. I believed that those were good examples for me. I believed in what they asked me to do. And I believed that I was capable based on what they saw in me too and what they would say to me too, how they was able to motivate me, how they was able to discipline or chastise me. I believed that they was doing what they needed to do to get the best version out of me. Now I'm doing what I need to do and hopefully it's fixing and free and relaxing your mind for you to get the best version out of you. And then it affect the others around you because they watch what you do. They watch what you do. Do you watch what you do? Do you watch what you say? Do you watch how you behave when things not going your way? Yeah, things going to be ugly. That's true. But it's all about what you believe in you. And if there's anybody leaving some comments in the chat, I don't see that. So let me know. Give me a thumbs up and, and, and let me know if I need to switch over to Facebook and see if it's a comment on there. I'm, I'm cool with that, too. Let's move on to number two. Why is it important for you to go after what you believe? Why is that important? I gotta go. I'll be right back. Listen to the music. <laughs> right where y'all at. It's flipped over with Luna's legs. I'm still scared. What are you scared for? Where is that? I don't have your shoes on. Where is that? Thank you. 
my apologies i'm back had to go get on that dad track and go kill one of those texas roaches hey what's going on whiskey charlie whiskey charlie say go why is it important for you to go after what you believe goals very very interesting to put goals in place will help your believing almost every day because it gives you a focal point as people would often say how do you know are you going if you don't have a target how do you know are you going if you don't have a target and setting goals is your target and your large goals need to be broken down in smaller goals and your smaller goals need to be broken down and celebrated into the smallest fraction of a goal. I know. That's just how I came to Big Sarge today. That's just how I came to Big Sarge today. Goals helps you get to success. If you don't believe you capable of the thing that you don't see one day becoming your reality, it would never be real for you or me. <laughs> if you don't believe those things that you can't see will be your reality, it would never be real for you or me. Somebody believe what they visualize. At one point in time, we wasn't able to see anybody on the other side of these things. At one point in time, this computer phone in my hand wasn't my reality. At one point in time, most of us, hey, Miss Charlene, how y'all doing over there? Tell my buddy, Mr. Dykes, I said hello. At one point in time, we didn't believe that this would be a thing. And now there's a point in time we can't believe if we leave the house without our phone. We cannot believe when our phones start to go crazy and start acting wrong because this is a part of our lifeline today. We believe everything that we need to do is attached to one of these little things. And when you get that thing to do that thing what you want it to, you feel very successful. Why is it important for you to go after you believe what you believe? Because when you go after what you believe, it starts to set things in order. It starts to set things, it, it, it starts to put you on a track to, as Whiskey Charlie would say, success. In the infantry, we believed we could accomplish anything. In your job, you believe that if you put in work, you're going to get a check. In our bodies, we believe that we put in good food. <laughs> the food is going to be good to you. But then that's a whole nother question about good food, but I'm not going to go there today. But we believe. Do you believe that what you say outlines what you do? Do you believe that what you say is one of the biggest effects on you? Because our words are power. That's critical. Our words are power. That's critical. If you believe the words that you say is going to change your life one day, if you believe you can't let go of the alcohol, if you believe you can't let go of the weed, if you believe you can't let go of the cigarettes, if you believe you can't let go of the hanging out with the bad friends, that's what's going to be your reality. But when you start to change the people around you and change what you see and change what you believe, you get to change your reality. It's important that you believe because the people that's watching you believe in you too. And what you do has an effect on their life, whether you want to or not. Leaders lead. Leaders believe that this is on me because they watching me. They see what I do. I'm not only talking to you, I'm talking to me too taking myself up off the shelf to discover my greatest internal wealth. 
speak grunt is for you to speak so you could do the same for yourself. If you don't open your mouth, if you don't believe you could be healed, the healing never begins. I told you. I didn't believe I would let somebody else 10 years ago drive me around this weekend, just a friend, a coaching friend who I had seen physically for the first time since knowing him. I was able to jump in the car and believe that we was going to be sweet with his wife driving you and me. It was a point in time where I would be tripping and there were some things that I didn't like what I seen. I will be honest, but I believe that I still was going to be transported safely. I was being transported safely. So I was able to take control of that past part of me, that negative part of me, that old part of that PTSD and said, nah, those ain't my thoughts no more. That's somebody else belief. That's the devil belief. I was believing that my beliefs about somebody else driving had changed. And by me doing that, why that was important for me because it allowed me to be free it allowed me to relax and just sit back and enjoy the ride look at that you believing and why that's important for you it changes the trajectory of your life it changes the trajectory of the people in your life it's important for you to believe in you because that's what God commands us to do. Ask and it shall be given to you. If you ask for something, it shall be given to you. But you have to believe that it's meant for you. I ask to be back with my family. I ask to do grunt speak. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek. Look for it. Go after it. I had to seek out my wife again. When I came back to Texas in 2017 for my best friend, my main man, Zuna, because went in at that time. I had to seek out my wife so I can hang out with my kids. And then I had to have a conversation with her and seek out some things that I had done in the past, believing that we would be able to make it through if we were able to talk about what we went through, I knocked on her door. You got to knock and it should be open to you. Knock on your heart. Ask God to help you get through if it's something that's troubling you. Knock on the door of a counselor or a therapist too. Knock on the door of anybody who you believe is going to be beneficial for you. Who you believe, knock on the door of a person or individual who you believe that you could help too, because it's something that you went through that God used you to bless somebody else too. That's why it's important that you believe in you. Because what you do does not only affect you, what you do affects you and the others around you. And then it affects the others around him too, based on the seed that you planted. But see, we don't want to believe if we never face those things. And then we start to put more things on top of those. We believe I need the alcohol. We believe I need the weed. We believe I need to be isolating myself, not to be around anyone else. No, we weren't meant to do this thing alone. We weren't meant to do this thing alone. When we buy ourselves, we should be finding ourselves. We shouldn't be beating ourselves down. But when you buy yourself and you're not finding yourself, you go seeking attention from someone else. You want people to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Mm -mm, that ain't how it go. You your first and your last support system. I hope you know. Because that's how the other people around you grow. So it's important that you believe in the opportunities that come before you. They came before you because you're capable. It's important that you believe that the, obstac the obstacles that you see are only strengthening you. 
failure is a beautiful thing or failing at something is a beautiful thing because it reminds you that you are capable if you put in the work and you continue to work your way through. We didn't always have success in the infantry, but we didn't harp on the failing. We harped on the fact that we believe maybe that this, not this time, but the next time is my time. And every time it was the next time, it was my time. Every time you get a new opportunity to live life, every second that you have breath in your life is a chance for you to build your life by believing, right? You believe your team going to win on Sundays and Saturdays when you're watching the game. You the coach, you the cheerleader, you the star and quarterback of your team. Mind, body, and spirit. If you don't motivate you, if you don't believe in you, then it affects the people around you. So believe in why that's important because it changes to the trajectory of your life. Why that's important because it changes the landscape of somebody else's life. We're all here to leave some type of legacy, but the legacy that you leave is going to be based on what you believe. If I believe that I was supposed to just been a divorcee because I'm the youngest of four children and all my siblings did the same thing, they got divorced. If I would have never believed that I could have back my family, then I would have never took steps on that. It was important for me to believe that because I needed to show my son that everything isn't easy. But if you continue to fight for what you want, then you can overcome what you've been through. I needed to show myself that just because I dropped out of high school doesn't mean that I was incapable. So when I went back, I was able to do that. I needed to show myself just because I quit the army in 99 doesn't mean that when I got back in, I couldn't free and relax my mind and have a better career, which I was able to do. And I affected a lot of young soldiers lives, too, in the positive way, I would say. So that's why it's important for you to go after those things that you believe. Because it's going to change the trajectory of your life and somebody else's life question number three number four that i have for you did i skip a number on y'all see i okay yeah i got you i'm right on track number four when will you do it and how will you progress after taking hold of what you believe when will you do what, you ask? When will you start to believe in the things that you spiritually see, mentally see, the positive things, though, G? Ooh, my eyes look like they sleepy. When will you believe? When will you take action on it? Celebrate not celebrate not smoking one day that's okay i've been through that too celebrate not drinking i've been through that too celebrate not not cheating on you celebrate the fact that you are able to sit down and read a page or two celebrate the fact that you are able to walk a block or two celebrate the fact that you are able to go somewhere without arguing not letting anybody get the best of you when will you believe that you capable how will you progress after that how have i progressed after getting back with my family how have i progressed after starting speak grunt how have i progressed in my life with what i believe i just told you about somebody else driving me look at the progress that happened in me I'm able to sit back and relax and enjoy an interesting ride for me. I'm able to move around and go more places because I don't feel like I have to always be driving. And I'm just talking about driving and maybe it's something more deep for you. I also have to celebrate the fact that I was able to go through therapy and, and work my way through that too. How did I progress? Well, 
me believing in me and, and looking at the things that I overcome that I felt like beat me. The high school dropout, the army too, working certain jobs. I hope that wasn't beneficial. I had started a business. I had got a, a, an associate's degree. I started speaking all based on I believe. And I continued the progress. I had friends say to me, you know, E, you just, you different. You have no problem with, with, with starting over and certain things and taking a chance on your life. But the one thing that I had to start over in that was most important is my believing in me. See, I could get on here in camera and I can talk to people and ask them to believe in them. But I had to check myself and ask me, was I truly believing in him? Or did I think everything that he was giving me was just for you? No, what he was giving me was for me too. It was for me first, for me to get through so I could be able to help you. And then I had some help too. I got my coaching information that I'm able to go through. I had to be able to learn me just like you need to learn you. Believing is knowing what goals you want and knowing you can accomplish it. Absolutely. Believing is definitely knowing what goals that you want and you're able to accomplish it. But that starts by taking action. You have to start putting some goals down. And you have to start taking steps to, to accomplish it. You have to start setting a schedule for yourself. One thing I know about the Army, they scheduled everything. Even if we didn't always follow it, it was a schedule and a plan in a place. You knew what you was doing for that day. From the time you woke up from the, to the time you went to bed, even when we was in the field, you knew. And some of us don't have a schedule or a plan for our life. We only look up to wake up to go to work, right? Your job has a plan and a schedule for you because they believe you're going to come punch in and do what they tell you to do. So they schedule your time. But we don't schedule our time because we sometimes don't believe that we have the time to do the things that we say we want to do. Do you believe you're capable? You are. You're capable of doing anything that you put your mind to. But you got to be willing to push you into those uncomfortable places. You got to be willing to push you into those uncomfortable situations. And you got to be willing to believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper against you. They will form. IEDs formed, rollover accidents formed, firefights formed, but I'm still here talking to you. Those was weapons that prospered, but they didn't break me, although that I felt like I was broken at times that I went through. But I believe that since God gave me life on another day, it was something I was supposed to do. I had to start to look at the positive things and continue to believe that I could get through that. All obstacles are only opportunities, too. What are goals? How do you come up with these goals? <clears throat> is it something you've seen and you want it, or is it your vision? Well, I'm going to give you two versions of goals. I'm going to give you the Webster's Dictionary version, and I'm going to give you my version. Goals, not in football. Number two, the object of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or a desired result. What are goals? Something that you want to accomplish. I want to get married by a certain time. That's a goal. I want to save so much money. That's a goal. I want to paint my car. That's a goal. I want to work at this company. That's a goal. I want to be debt free. I want to be alcohol free. I shout out to my buddy Cameron. I see him posting on his uh, Facebook page. And I think he posted it the other day that he was 18 months through sobriety. I met another young man over this weekend who was volunteering with me at the coach. And he said he was five years clean on his sobriety. I have other friends who was clean who's been clean on sobriety. They had a goal. And maybe that goal was just to make it through one day. And that's okay because you have to break that thing down into small bite-sized things. And you have to do what you believe. You don't have to set a goal for three years if you haven't made it three days. 
So a goal is something that you want to accomplish and how you get there is based on what you say to yourself, how you schedule it for yourself. It's going to be difficult to accomplish your goals when you're around individuals who doesn't have any goals for themselves. They say we become the company we keep, right? And how did you come up with those goals? I don't know how you come up with your goals, but I came up with my goals for me by spending time with me. By asking God to show me something that he wanted me to see about something in my spirit that 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 moved me. Something that I believed that I could do. Again, when I dropped out of high school, I just believed that I needed to get a high school diploma and I could. So that was a goal for me. And one day in 1999, two, three, four years after I was officially supposed to graduate, it became my reality. Two years after being separated from my wife, three years later, we were remarried, right? That was a goal of mine. But how did it become my reality? I took the time to work on me, to question me, the things that traumatized me, that bothered me. And I took responsibility for the trauma that I caused in other people's life, too. And it was also a goal of mine to apologize to those people and forgive those people and forgive myself, too, in order to make it through. You don't get stuck on the fact that you made a mistake. You don't get stuck on the fact that you fell short today. You go back and you look at the goal and you refocus and you begin to speak or you begin to say, whatever it is, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You need to say, I'm capable of this. Me and my wife, when we praying and I'm going through a funk, she has to remind me of what my name say. Ethan is strong and optimistic, permanent and wise, constantly being faithful and dependable, always enduring and unchanging. I set that on my mind and helped me remember this is who I am. This is what I'm able to do. My goals are just a navigation course to help me get through, to see those things in my vision to one day come true, to be my reality. Miss Charlene, Michelle said, we're making progress day by day. I think we are moving in the right direction. I believe you are moving in the right direction, too. I touch and agree with you. And that's the best way to make progress day by day. Celebrate the small victories anyway. We're often looking for the big cat. We're often looking for the big extravagant things by miss. And we sometimes miss the small things. We have to be grateful every day that we just made it through that day. We have to be grateful every day that we didn't lose or go off track that day. We have to be grateful every single day that we even had a day to celebrate. Celebrate the small things. And that's when you truly start winning because it's the small things that build you to the, the larger things or the larger goals. And then you truly know, wow, this is based on what I believe for me. So keep celebrating. Yes, we all have short backs and short and setbacks and shortcomings. But it's those who focus on the wins instead of the losses who continue to win and have victory in their life. When will you do it? Do it now. Do it now. Write down one goal for yourself right now today, whatever that may be for you. Make it simple too. Make it 24 hours. Make it 12 hours if you have to. And believe that you're capable because here's what's going to happen when you do. When you do accomplish that goal, you're going to know and you're going to believe, wow, this was, this was pretty easy. I was able to do that thing. You want to lose weight? Don't look to lose it all in one day. Don't look at all. I know you ain't going to lose it all in one day. You know what I'm attempting to say. But don't. It didn't take you three. It took you three or four years to get out of shape. It's not going to take you three or four months to get back in shape. The body may be capable, but the mind has to be willing. 
The body is capable, but it's the mind that has to be willing. And if you've only been exercising your body for a few months and you've only been and you've been exercising your mind negatively for a th few years, then what you think you're going to hear? When your body starts to get sore and it starts to get the clicking and popping on you, you ain't going to think you're capable. So you have to continue to exercise that muscle to believe. But now is the time to start doing that thing. Now is the time to start setting the schedule in place. Now is the time to start taking out a little time of your day to have your own space for you. To ask yourself, what do you need to believe to help your goals become true? And if you don't have a goal, that's cool. But ask yourself, what do I want to do? Leave the page blank and come back to it in a day or two. And be silent sometimes. Prayer is communication. It's a two-way street. You ain't just telling God, listen to me and blah, 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 blah. This is what I need from you. No, you got to shut your mouth, sit down, be quiet, and see what he wants you to do. That's why I get lost in nature, too. That's why I go ride my bike and I go take my walks, too. I don't just isolate myself. I isolate myself at times so I can free and relax my mind and hear what he's saying to me. So when those goals come to me and as I'm visualizing, I understand that that could be a part of my reality. But I know when he gives it to me, then now is that time to start working on what I say is mine. Procrastination will kill you slowly. Procrastination will kill you slowly. We all think we have all the time in the world, but we don't know when our time going to end. So today, right now, is the time that you begin going after that life that you know is going to be better for you and the people that's around you. Because what our grandparents, I'm a black, I'm an African-American male. And sometimes we believe that the white man hold us down. And if you believe that the white man holding you down, you're going to be held down. If you're a Caucasian or a white male or a white female and you believe that all African-Americans or black people you encounter then are negative and in bad, then you're going to always see it that way. And you won't have good friends to this day. Me and Whiskey Charlie, the best of friends. What if we had came in believing the negative things that people told us about one another? We would never know. We would never know. I have a goal to, to, to reach the world. You think I'm thinking about color when I'm talking about reaching the world? That's a negative part of our mind of looking to keep us where we used to be. What if people didn't believe? What if Martin Luther King didn't believe he had a dream? What if JFK didn't believe we was going to go to the moon? What if Steve Jobs didn't believe in the iPhone? But what did they do when they believed it and they talked about it and they put it out there? They started to act on it on, on it, too. When is the time? Now is the time. You may not accomplish it right away, but if you say now is the time and you start putting parameters in place, you start putting schedules in place, you start putting plans in place, you have goals that's going to set you in that direction for that day, then you going to be okay. Not based on what they say, but based on what you say and what he say. You got to give up some of that power to God today. You got to give up all that power to God today. It says it in his word. Anyone who's willing to give up their life for me will gain and find their life. Because we know it's bigger than this physical thing. If you listen listening to me, you know I'm God-fearing. You know I'm talking about it. What's down here in the comment chat for I missed that? Now is the time. Agreed. Question. Question would be is, do you believe you are? Question would be is, do you believe or are you listening to others' beliefs? It's a powerful question. And that's something I think we all have to internally ask for ourselves. I used to believe, and sometimes in my negative part of me, I would think about what other people believe about what I'm saying. Does it make sense? Are they getting it? Are they rocking with it? And God be like, man, do you believe? You can't worry about what they see because your perception is your reality. And I believe that what I say is a blessing. And I believe the simplicity in what I say it in is what affects people. 
I believe the rhyming style that I speak in sometimes that just naturally comes to me is helping people because we're all, all of us are attracted to melodies and, and not just melodic flow, but the, the, the smooth flow of things that happens in our life. That's why music makes us feel all right. The melodies, it's it's painting the picture for you and me. And we believe what we hear and then we believe what we see based on the videos that they put out to me and you. So a lot of times what most people believe is what they see somebody else do. But you have to spend time by yourself and know that you are capable too of doing anything that you put your mind to. What happens when you believe is you become very successful. We admire those people who stand out and do things on their own because we believe that they got it going on. But here's the thing. You got it going on, too. You just got to see it for you. A lot of people believe they look a lot of a lot of belief. A lot of believe in people they look up to. Yeah, a lot of people do believe in people that they look up to. And that's cool because if you don't always believe in you, find somebody who believes in themselves too, who believe in them. And then you start to look at them and you start to use their wins as your wins. Case in point, Tom Brady was 199th pick. He's like, man, look at this. If he's able to overcome that, what am I able to do? I know I can overcome being number two, number 22, number 23. He human, just like you and me. He didn't believe what they said. He didn't believe in the picture that we see. He believed that if I kept working, then I can be exactly where I want to be. It's the hard work that sets you free after you see what you believe. You have to work towards that thing. I believe that I can use that God would use me to help people get through grunts in their families. But it would have never worked if I wouldn't have started working that thing. If I wouldn't have never got on this camera and started talking about that thing, it wouldn't have worked. And the first show that I ever did was based off the movie that I watched, The Outpost, where the, the uh, infantry squad was basically overran in Afghanistan. But I want to say it was Sergeant Rowe who believed that it was capable of getting back home and doing what they need to do, but they was going to have to fight their way through. And the other individuals, the other people around, they believed in him too, because he believed that nothing was impossible. Lately, I have learned that if I don't believe in myself, then I can't expect others to believe in me. My kids, my husband, I think it starts with me. Absolutely right. When I went to go see Dr. Eric Thomas this weekend, his conference, the 120 conference, it was based off of his book that he just wrote, New York Times number one bestseller, You Owe You. Here's what I recommend you do. Go get it. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target and Walmart probably too. Go get this book by Dr. Eric Thomas E.T., the hip-hop preacher. You owe you. Nobody else. You owe you. That goes for me, my wife, my kids, and everybody around me. We owe it to ourselves to discover our greatest internal wealth based on what we believe about ourselves. And when you have a little setback or when you fall back, don't live in that. Don't beat yourself up about that. As Aaliyah said, as at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. And this is what this man talks about. Falling down and dusting himself off and trying again and reminding himself that E, you owe you. You owe you. Nobody else is capable of giving you what you believe is yours. Go get the book. Take a look through it, read it, highlight it, read it again, share it with a friend, get accountability group that believe in you too, but make sure it's people who believe in themselves. That's why y'all come on here and rock with this. That's why y'all come on here and support Speak Grunt and Grunt Speak, 
because you know that I believe. And my believing is helping you believe in you or else you wouldn't be coming through. So I celebrate you, Charlene. Definitely it starts with you because again, I said that that was number three, should have been number two. Um, why is it important for you? No, that was number two. How you? How does what you believe change the outcome of your life and others around you? Wife, kids, the people at your job, the people that you meet on the street. I met people throughout the airport. I was at the airport this past, of course, Thursday when I flew and Sunday when I flew. I gave both set of flight attendants inspiration cards. They asked me, why do, why do I do what I do? Because I just believe I can share. It's my job to share motivation and inspiration with you. I believe that these cards that I pass out are going to inspire you. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through, but I believe that this is what I'm supposed to do. And I believe that everything that I figured was an obstacle was an opportunity. Every bad story that you hear from me was only a story of triumph and glory that God used for me. But I had to look at me. I had to look at me. And if you don't look at you and see you for the great person that you are, then how can you expect anybody else to? How can you expect anybody else to? So it starts with you. It ends with you. Because you, oh, you. My belief lately is better physical shape. I want to be healthier for my family and myself to be around longer for them. My wife has been motivating me and keeping me focused. Hey, that's a powerful thing. I see you posting. Well, I've seen you and we've talked about you going to the gym with your pops and things like that. And then what's so funny, when you get on track, it feels good to be back. It feels good to be pushing yourself to get in shape. I told my wife, this is my last day for having my little energy drinks and all my little fatty foods. Chicago was a good time, but it's time for me to get back to my healthy ways too. I had a couple of days off of my push-ups, let my body heal. First thing in the morning, it's going to get real. When that alarm go off at 4 a.m., it's time to get up and get after it. And when you believe in you and people see you believe in you, they begin to support you too. And it ain't no feeling better than when you have the support of your wife or your significant other, your husband and your kids, then that makes it easier to get through. But it all starts with you. It all starts with you. Believing that you're capable. Believing that what you do is going to affect others too. Believing that now is the time to take steps to progress you. And I'm guarantee I'm not guaranteeing, but I'm assured that it's going to progress you in a positive way. Dr. Eric Thomas talked about it a few days ago. I took a step and then it progressed me to another step. And look at that. I got people coming out here to see me who believe in me and they're making progress too, based on what I was able to do. I'm not Dr. Eric Thomas, I'm Ethan Smith. And I believe that what I was able to do was gonna help you too. And look, it's progress in me and it's progress in you. Continue to believe in yourself, continue to believe in God, the higher power, whatever you call it for you, that it's gonna help you get through. Believe that you're capable of doing anything that you put your mind to. Don't let that negativity stop you. Don't let what you used to be break you down and stop you from going or becoming who you want to be. Believe that if God gave you life today, that is something else that you need to do. He counting on you. He counting on you, you counting on you, and the people around you are counting on you too. That is it. That is all I'm through. If you have another comment, drop it down in the chat before we go, because I believe it's time for me to go relax with my wife and uh, prepare for my day tomorrow. You know how it go. I really, really, really believe that this message is with something for you that is going to have an effect in your life and things that you do. Start setting those goals, start setting those plans and look toward where you're going to. And if you need something to really help you, I tell you, go get the book. You owe you. If you want to know more about you, 
shoot me an email and we can talk about my coaching too. And I can help you pull out some scientific, I can pull out some scientific things that we can turn into practical and you really see how it benefits you learning more about you because it's important to know who you are and why you do the things you do. A lot of times we think we know ourselves, but we don't truly know ourselves because we didn't look into ourselves. And that's what Dr. Eric Thomas was able to do with this flight assessment tool that I use for my coaching that helps me because I'm my first client, helps my family, and it can help you too. But you got to start believing in you. You got to start believing that what you do affects the others around you. And you got to start believing that now is the time for you to do what you want to do. And if you start doing that, then it's going to progress you. You're here for a reason, and it's not to live in negativity. It's not to live in fear. It's not to live in doubt. Let me be very clear. God said, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans for you to prosper. I ain't remembering the rest right now, but he wants you to have an abundant life. I believe it's Jeremiah 29 and 11. I knew you before you was in your mother's womb, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans for you to prosper. Prosperity doesn't look like living in negativity. Yeah, bad things are going to happen. But depending on your attitude and your view, you get to decide what's bad for you. You get to decide what's bad for you. So believe that you're capable. Know that it's capable. And know that when you take steps on those things that you want to do, know that they're going to come true. They have no choice but to. Asking it shall be given to you. Seeking ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened too. For those who ask, receives. Those who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened unto him. You got to believe in something bigger than you. I call him God. I don't know what you call him for you. But it's something inside of you that's more powerful and greater than what you're going through the body can be changed by changing the mind you capable you don't know how much time you have but now is the time and if you celebrate the time that you have now like it's your last then all you can do at the end is laugh because you did everything that you were supposed to do with the time that was given to you but believe you capable. I believe in you. I hope you do too. This has been another episode of Speak Grunt. By Grunts for Grunts. Where everybody is welcome. But everybody cannot, will not be a member. 11B, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha 2. 0311 Marine Corps crew. And the family and it's the people that support us all around. This is what you do. Speak to yourself believe in yourself and work take action steps to make it through y'all have a blessed and wonderful night that's all i got for you Uh oh thank you mr ethan you and grunt speak make a difference i'll get the book hey thank you very much for getting the book that'll be a great support for your family and i know it'll be a great support for dr eric thomas his mission in life is to win the nobel peace prize and I'm going to make sure I do everything in my part to assist him in that. And part of winning the Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize is how many people that you can affect, how many people that you can help. We think about people like Mother Teresa and Gandhi and things like that. I think Gandhi won a Nobel Peace Prize. I have to look it up. No, Mother Teresa did. But if there's nothing else that I could do, I'm going to share positive information with you and things that help me get through. Because I ain't just the client, the president, I'm the client too. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night and I will talk to y'all next week. Feel free to drop a comment down below, some things that y'all might want to talk about, some things that you might want to know and uh, something that you could be going through. It can be talking about something financial, how to get into the VA space. It could be talking about therapy in that way. Think about health. Like, your health is your wealth, man. Take advantage of it for yourself. Not just for your significant other, for your kids, but take advantage of, take advantage of it for you. 
and go after what you say you want to do. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. Peace.